finds a way. The most interesting star, I think, the, the star that could be shocking in our sky is this one, Betelgeuse or Betelgeuse. It's a red giant star. If you put it where the sun is, it would extend out to the orbit of Jupiter. It's enormous. It's very unstable. It's about to explode. It could be tomorrow. It could be during this broadcast and it would shine like a second sun in the sky because it's only 600 light years God, away. So that would be one of the most spectacular astronomical events ever. Recently, renowned physicist Brian Cox has given the world something to think about. According to Brian, one of the brightest stars in the constellation in the night sky, Betelgeuse, the red giant star, is on the verge of a supernova explosion. All data received by astronomers also confirm this impending catastrophe. Now we wonder, are we about to witness a disastrous supernova explosion, or is it mere speculation? Let's find out the dangers surrounding Betelgeuse and look at the warning Brian Cox has to give about this Betelgeuse supernova. The giant red star of significant proportion, which earned its name as Betelgeuse, shines brighter than most of its counterparts and is located in the Orion constellation, particularly the left shoulder. Although it has long been in the faces of all due to its distinctive features, it is impossible to term the recent findings as regular as they have intensified curiosity and interest in the giant celestial body. Naturally, a star is considered a regular supernova if it measures about eight times more than the sun in weight. However, the celestial marvel, Betelgeuse, breaks all protocol by being more than 700 times the size of the sun, much more than anyone can imagine and about 15,000 times more massive. The recognition of the giant star can be traced back to the Greek astronomer Claudius Ptolemy, who was secretive about the star's clout. This was when the star's attributes were not readily known by all, and were limited to color and position. Following modern instruments and investigations since then, it is easier to analyze celestial bodies like Betelgeuse and gain insight into their properties. The giant red star, Betelgeuse, seems to be aging well increasing in mass as it continues to exist. The star is about 8 to 8.5 million years old, old in the stellar measurement and grading system, but relatively young in human terms. With its physical properties, it is safe to say that the vastness of the star, if visualized compared to the sun, would most likely displace the first four planets, Earth included. How this giant red star managed to gather this mass leaves scientists in awe continuously, but has merely increased the interest in itself. As scientists continue to probe further to understand the star, inquiry has helped us understand that its size is not a mere happening, but a stage in its general stellar life cycle. In this life cycle, the stellar giant is presently in its twilight phase, which is denoted by expansion, cooling, and then the fusing of hydrogen into helium in its core. Its current phase, that is, being giant, red, and hot, is known as the supergiant phase, which involves the culmination of millions of years of evolution, entailing different processes and changes that have managed to transform it from the hot blue star it once was to the giant red it is now. This transformation can also be linked to the forces of nuclear fusion and gravity. The color change of Betelgeuse is due to the cooler temperature of its surface compared to other stars, the sun included. The sun's temperature is about 5,500 K, and that of Betelgeuse is about 3,500 K, allowing the giant red star to cast light at wavelengths that would make it appear red. Just as the size is not a mere occurrence, but a result of its current growth phase, this star's color is not just a visual trait, but also gives information about the current condition of the star per time, as well as gaseous exchange and vastness. From ancient texts of the Chinese and Romans, it has been deduced that about 2,000 years ago, the giant red star was mutually yellow, and the first record of it being red was in the 9th century, as described by Arabic scholars, which gives us a clue to the star's evolutionary path. Aside from its color, another physical attribute to discuss is brightness. The brightness of Betelgeuse is described as a semi-variable star, which means that the intensity of the light it emits increases and decreases over time. The luminosity of Betelgeuse, this singular effect, is a property of luminosity that has fascinated astronomers and astrophysicists over time. 
Beetlejuice, which usually follow a 400-day cycle with a longer cycle that spans about five years, documented since 1836 by Sir John Herschel, and most likely earlier by Aboriginal oral traditions. In all of these features, however, the wonder of Beetlejuice is not based solely on its color change or brightness, but also on the irregularity with which it does. Usually, stars follow a particular pattern. Beetlejuice changes its intensity, dimming and brightening. This feature shows more about its form regarding its processes and makeup. Recently, amid research, the giant red star captivated astronomers and stargazers worldwide with an unexpected change in appearance and color. From information and investigation, this event is now known as the Great Dimming. What had happened? The year was 2019, and Betelgeuse had begun dimming mysteriously. This reduction in brightness was so sudden and intense, losing its brightness at an average of 0.1 magnitude per day, and by February 2020, it had reached its lowest luminosity. It was noted that Betelgeuse dimmed roughly every 430 days, and during each cycle that lasted six years, dark spots or star spots appeared on its surface. The giant red star Betelgeuse is naturally visible to the naked eye even in light-polluted areas, now seem to be noticeably fainter as observed by amateur observers. A star, as it were, is no ordinary creation, and although they differ, particularly in Betelgeuse's case, the time paradox was a big problem when trying to monitor its activities. In simple terms, it explains how even looking at this giant star, although it seems so, we are not looking at it in real time, but as it was in the past. This is because of the time light takes to travel to us when emitted. Case in point, it takes about 725 light years for us to see the light that was left nearly seven centuries ago. This poses a disadvantage in predicting the nature and changes in the star because we perpetually live in its past. This is a further reminder of limitations surrounding further research as regards space. During the investigation and research, the team utilized the Hubble Space Telescope to analyze the giant star and unveil its patterns and properties. It was the initial stage of a three-year study to observe the variations in Betelgeuse's outer atmosphere. The observation helped contribute a unique insight into the dynamics of a variable star like this, which is known to expand and contract as well as reduce and increase brightness. The Hubble Space Telescope was most helpful in this research due to its sensitivity to ultraviolet light, which allowed the researchers to examine the different layers of the surface of the star whose heat was owed partially to the sun's turbulent convection cells, which involves the upward movement of hot gases and the downward movement of cool gases. Apart from the use of the Hubble Space Telescope, there was ALMA, which is an advanced observatory in Chile that delivered ultra-high resolution images of the star to find behavioral patterns and insights. The discoveries made by ALMA technology have managed to leave astronomers in awe as they are detailed, especially the expansive gas plume extending from the surface of the star. In February of 2021, the giant star went through a dim cycle that registered a V-band magnitude of plus 1.64, which, although bright, dim more compared to its usual brightness. The dark spots are referred to as star spots, or magnetic spots, and are the parts of the giant star where the magnetic field is most potent, creating cool areas in contrast to the surrounding gas. The essence is thus seen in how it emits hot gas from its interior to the surface. It is important to note that the magnetic field of bulge is believed to be several thousand times stronger than the sun's magnetic field. This traps gases in loops, which results in zones of intense magnetic activities visible as dark spots. These dark spots on the surface of the giant star are said to be larger than the Earth, covering up to 20% of the Earth. The star spots play a massive role in the star's brightness because the more the star spots, the dimmer the lightning of the star. This is because the star spots cover the more relaxed areas and will emit less light. This impending and looming detonation is quite intriguing because of the proximity of ball Jews and the Earth. Recently, data has shown that gravitational wave readings, which were below expectation, have caused astronomers to worry, although data collected leans towards the impending blast, speculating that it is not far off 
The exact moment remains unknown. Should this event occur, what would be the future of Beetlejuice? Several theories have since come up to explain the ejection of mass and dust, one of which is most prevalent and explains a phase just before the supernova explosion. This particular theory gained traction because of the belief that Ball Juice was nearing the end of its life. Further investigations by the James Webb Telescope. When the efficient James Webb Telescope was employed in the findings concerning the Ball Juice, deduced that several years ago, the variable giant star had undergone an eruption that resulted in the loss of a tangible portion of its visible surface. Apart from mass ejection, another event that occurred was the emission of a large amount of dust clouds, which was an unprecedented occurrence. While dimming is natural for dying stars, the other events are uncommon and baffle scientists into probing for answers. The sun, although seemingly unchanging, continues to undergo several outer atmospheric losses in coronal mass ejections. Nothing has come close to that of Betelgeuse. Using the James Webb Telescope, scientists can discover more reasons for the mass ejection. According to findings, the stars lose their mass as the nuclear fusion begins to extinguish in different supernovas. The mass loss rate will therefore influence the fate of the star, and regarding the mass loss of Betelgeuse, it could be inferred as a likely prelude. The conclusion from the Hubble Space Telescope is that the dimming of the giant star was caused by an ejection of a hot material into space. The material ejected then formed a dust cloud, which then covered the surface of the star and reduced the amount of light reaching Earth. The dust cloud was formed from plasma of very high temperature, which erupted from a convection cell on the star's surface, moving through until it settled on the outer layer. As the temperature dropped and the erupted material cooled, it settled as dust particles that blocked light on the star's surface. The ultraviolet light spectroscopic observations of the Hubble Space Telescope were essential to ascertain the exact period of the final darkening of the Blias. The ejected mass was then calculated and seen to weigh about 400 billion times the mass typically released in a standard mass ejection, weighing more than the Earth's moon. The giant star moves around at about 67,000 miles per hour relative to its surrounding interstellar medium, creating a bow shock. The bow shock is a wave formed by the wave of a moving ship as the star travels. This phenomenon is better seen as the star's outer layers interact with the interstellar gases and dust, providing a spectacular testament to the dynamic nature of the star and its interaction with the cosmic environment. The phenomenon is important as it helps to inform us about the current state of ball Jews and contributes to our understanding of stellar understanding and the process of mass loss. It has also been observed that, since the ejection of the large mass, the star has been in an unstable state. From hydrodynamic simulations, suggestions have emerged regarding a connection between the star's convective activities, mass ejection, and subsequent pulsation mode switching. The driven pulsation responsible for mass loss is limited. This is due to the constant energy dissipation through shock heating. A professor at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Salvatore Vitali, reported that the detected wave from the direction of the ball Jews may not have originated from it. He explained that neutrinos are usually released before a supernova explanation, and regarding this giant star, it had not been released. Also, the fact that ball juice still shone in the night sky, although dimmer than it once shone, was an unlikely source for the emission of gravitational waves. The intercepted wave is checked to confirm if it is a gravitational wave because it lacks the characteristics of known merges. The possibility of the earthly disturbances causing noise and detection has been ruled out, so the exact nature is quite uncertain. The gamma rays emitted after a supernova explosion can be a thousand times more potent than the energy from the sun, and if directed toward Earth, could be bad for terrestrial life. The danger towards terrestrial life would be seen in the altering and damaging DNA. A supernova in its most recent event, as an observer in the Milky Way, occurred in 1600. Supernovae are of two types, one of which is the white dwarf star, which undergoes a runaway nuclear reaction, and the second, also known as a fire collapse supernova, results from a star collapsing under gravity after running out of nuclear fuel. The fire collapse supernova is interesting as it emits light and many neutrinos. 
Neutrino emission may precede the explosion, expand days or months, and long before the explosion occurs. Astronomers have established the early warning system of the supernova, also known as the S-News, a network of neutrino detectors across many countries, and Nautica included. A collapsing star may form black holes, but the abrupt cessation of the neutrino stream could signal this phenomenon. As astronomers continue their research for missing stars, they may identify potential black hole locations by observing blank spaces in the list of known stars. Massive stars are not left out of this because, although they are considered celestial celebrities, they still undergo destructive supernova explosions. As always, concerns about their proximity to Earth stem from their likelihood to explode. There is evidence of a starburst bearing Earth about three million years ago, found through the presence of radioactive iron atoms, known as Iron 60 or 60 Fe. The initial seconds of a supernova unleash a radiation blast. Still, the real danger emerges hundreds of millions of years later, when cosmic rays accelerated by subatomic particles erupt from the aftermath. These cosmic rays shred ozone layers and inundate the planetary surface with lethal radiation. Evidence of significant levels of Ion-60, which is a radioactive isotope produced solely in supernovas, is usually found in deep-sea cores and rigs, suggesting that a supernova ejector had struck Earth in the last few million years. Is the Betelgeuse explosion imminent or not? Do you think the Earth could recover from such a bang? Leave your answers in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, click on the following video on your screen and you will enjoy it.